Hello everyone. My name is Katie Rock and I am, this is my very first YouTube video and I've been wanting to do it for a very long time. But of course, um, I have these feelings of not good enough, who would ever want to hear my story, um, or I'm not going to be able to relate to people and they're never even going to like me, so why even try? Um, I think my biggest gift is empathy. Um, I'm generally able to feel and know and understand what somebody's feeling when they're going through a hard time and way better, more able to help them out of a situation than I am of my own. I'm recording this video in a very raw time for myself as well and I'm hoping that one day I can look back and see some significant change. The last four years have been very um, successful for me in many ways, very emotional and very um, trying like many people. Um, it's so easy to look on Facebook and see how somebody's doing and think, wow, damn, they got it together. Look how far they've come. And truly, I don't think it matters how far you've come. I think it's more about where you are and where you are right now. And honestly, right now, I'm not okay. And I keep reading these things online that say, it's okay not to be okay. So... Long story short, I'm a fucking survivor, a hustler, and a lover of life. I believe in people probably more than I believe in myself. And I want to learn from myself if I'm going to be able to help others to know that it's so much easier said than done to, oh, just start exercising or just go out of the house more often. And sometimes the solution isn't simple and we have to go through it and Oftentimes it's we're supposed to be learning something. I'm not so sure what the answer is. All I know is I'm on a boat right now. And feeling a little hopeless. I have a fucking boat though. I manifested this shit, let me tell you. Um, I don't come from a great background. I, I know what it looks like when somebody's just been given all the money and their dad gives them a boat and all that shit. Um, I went through a good time in my life that I was able to envision really big, awesome things for myself and they came true. I'm a fucking high school dropout, 10th grade. Um, I was in foster care. I was a ward of the court. I had to drop out of high school in 10th grade because I didn't have anywhere to live. I'm not saying that for you to feel sorry for me, but I am saying for the first in my life that it's okay that that affects me. I do feel in my life that oftentimes people would say, oh, just get over it or whatever. And I, I think it affects me today in negative ways and positive. The positive are other people that have went through it. Oh my God, I can relate so much more. And that's my message. I can relate so much more. It takes one to know one. You know if you know. Not sure if I said, but my name is Katie Rock. My company is Michigan Rock Block Crisis Navigator. I'm stationed in Waterford, Michigan and I love to help people. I'm trying to make a business out of it and it's been so stressful. I didn't mention because oftentimes I am a space bucket that just, I have all these ideas and they go everywhere and everybody thinks I'm all over the place. I do also want to say on this day, I believe it's uh, September 17th, that one day I'm gonna have a lot of money a lot of fucking money and I'm gonna give it all away because I can't take it with me and I love shining hope on people because I know that even though I'm in this position right now that I feel so sad and hopeless in many ways because I'm not exactly where I want to be 
that I believe in people. I believe in people because I was a high school dropout who just kept getting back up. Each time I got knocked down, I got back up again. I had children young, so young, and I loved them so much in so many ways. I've been reflecting lately and I feel like I failed them. I was 18 years old when I had my son. Pray for my son. Depression is a straight jacket, 100 pounds on your fucking chest. And it's super hard to pull out of it. Especially when you've been hurt. In life, everybody's getting hurt. I think it's more important that we be raw and completely vulnerable so that everybody knows that we all don't have it together. Oftentimes we look on social media and we think, oh my God, they got it together. And I know there's probably a lot of people looking at this video right now. How can I be fucking sorry for this? But she's on a boat. It's amazing to me that I have definitely figured out in my old age that it doesn't matter where you are or what you get or how much it is. There's this thing in a human. We just want more. So when can we get to the point that it's like, good enough? Who knows what the answer to that is. But as far as getting back up, this 18 year old, by the time I was 25 year old, single mom with, with three children, honestly, from the depths of my freaking soul, did the best I could with what I knew how. Can I look back and say, I wish I would've did more? Can I say today that my kids being 24, 21, and 18 now and is some kind of empty nest syndrome thing? I think it might be. And I seriously, as they were growing up, thought that would never freaking happen. Like, I'd be like, woo! But they gave me a purpose. And when they don't need you as much, you have to find your own purpose. So for young moms, don't lose your purpose. Don't lose yourself. It's like moms, when you become a mom, you, uh, you're you no longer you, your mom. I mean, you go to the damn store and you hear somebody else's kid saying mom and you're like, freaking have trauma attack. I mean, like, I know moms relate to that. Any, what I'm saying is all during that time, I made my mistakes. I got involved in addiction with Vicodin. I got involved with the wrong men. I got involved with things that held me back and I made mistakes along the way. I guess almost talking to myself out loud right now is kind of like a therapy so I suggest you do it too because the more people that come out and say you know what I'm freaking sad too. We can all relate and maybe we can get happy together because from looking on the outside, I should be proud of myself. I should be okay with being proud of myself. I am a fucking resource gangster, hustler kind of bitch that gets shit done and I do it fucking good. I do because I care and because I want to and because it's my fucking passion. I'm working on a program right now and it's called Ikiga. Ikiga. And it's um, the Japanese like philosophy for life. And the four things in it is, number one, what do you love? What is it that when you do, time disappears, you're no longer even, you don't even realize where you are because it's just so easy and natural and comes from within. Number two, what are you good at? 
oftentimes you can find out about that when you ask other people or what other people often say like oh my god you're so good at that you know I'm still trying to find my ikiga in the middle of trying to teach it but I think it's important that mental health and everything related to mental health drug addiction any of that should be solved by somebody else that's gone through it too I went back to school for this and some of the younger girls that um, I went to school with, it didn't matter how book smart we got. When you lived in Bloomfield your whole life, no offense, and mommy and daddy just paid for things and you were just expected that you were gonna go to college and you know you got the best of best tutors to make sure your SATs were great and life was just handed to you and you have to go and be a, um, I had an internship where it was a domestic violence internship. We had to go into Detroit. And for instance, excuse me, one of the houses that I went in, oops, isn't that beautiful? I'll just talk like that for a minute. One of the houses that I went into, they had like gun holes, shots in the walls, and this the, the baby was dirty, and the girls that I was in school with judged that. They obviously don't understand mental health. If you have a female woman that is getting abused by a man and she has children and she is trying to wake up every day and get through life and she doesn't change a diaper, it's not because she doesn't love her child. It's not because she's irresponsible and um, in unintelligent. It's because she's suffering. And maybe with a little help, she could be pulled out of it. See, that's where my passion comes and I uh, I get very passionate about certain things. I don't even think I've mentioned this, but this girl, 10th grade, dropout, went back to school and it's many years, many years. I took 37 classes, 37 that did not count towards my degree. But that didn't stop me. Because I was not directed in life. I was a ward of the court when I turned 18 years old and went back to school and they gave me a bunch of student loans. I didn't even have my GED yet. I had to take a entrance exam. And I was misdirected by Baker College. I'm sure other people have had this happen. And I took human service classes that did not count towards a social work degree. Regardless, I just kept going back to school while raising my kids, having breakups, drug addiction, children misbehaving, me acting a fool, me getting sober and being in an organization for five years that completely changed my life. Regardless, changed my life because of the community I think and that's what I want to do is build a community called not AA audacious advocacy and I want people to have access to luxury mental health because if you really could see what the solutions are for people that have money it's insane but let's just say it's like $30,000 a week. With that said, in 2019, I got my bachelor's degree in social work and I graduated with a 3.987. Yes! And I had to graduate with a high degree because I'm competitive and I wanted to say that I did. There's only like seven or eight percent of the people in the population that have a master's degree, by the way. And that gave me another push. Don't tell me there's not a way, because then I'll find a way. I forgot that, or I didn't realize that until just now. Um, I got accepted in uh, 2020 for the accelerated master's program for social work with the specialization in entrepreneurship leadership and diversity that was a hell of a year 
it was a 10 month program that was broken down that you had to have a 3.8 in order to get into and everything shut down March 2020 including my internship and all my schooling and my kids like breaking down but I did it June 2020 I didn't get to walk but maybe this is my celebration if I get any fucking likes or shares um, June 2020 this high school foster kid and yes I was in foster care and no I don't want you to feel sorry for me Here's the thing, despite the odds, despite what everybody said that I could be capable of or that I was too emotional or that I was uh, all over the place, um, whatever that anybody in this world has says that I'm not capable of, I am and so are you. So in June 2020, I graduated with my master's degree. I got a 3.67. I was pissed, but I did it. Since then, I've opened up my own company called Rock Rescue. And through grants, I've been providing free services to people in my community to get help with, with access to things like unemployment, Medicaid, Medicare, counseling, therapy, uh, funding to get the therapy, and referrals to any other kind of service that um, could maybe help somebody in their need, housing needs access to rental assistance, mortgage assistance, city improvement loans, and um, restorations for low-income people. I have been working on a, my rescue or rock rescues kind of grown and developed into my rock block, which is M-I-R-O-C-K block. And that um, is Michigan rock block because I became a government contractor for the state of Michigan. And if you go on the MDHHS website um, and look up Navigator, it will come up under Rock Rescue. I just recently partnered with Amazon as a community navigator as well. And I see an opportunity that's never existed before for the mental health industry. That is to integrate e-commerce, blockchain, and social responsibility and corporate social responsibility into the same language as they are different but mean the same thing. I apologize. I'm telling you it's about time that we have access to the services that everybody else has. I also on my website will be critically reviewing and disrupting the mental health system as I know for certain that the $80 billion in funding for education did not go to our education completely. Only 9% of it at this time has. I'm angry at the way the system works and I think that something needs to be done about it. I'm looking for other individuals that are interested in that, especially people that are related to gaming and IT and um, web development. And especially if you know how to do NFTs, Call me and we'll get rich together. NFTs are a, a, a new way and it's a decentralized network of transactions basically cutting out the government, which is what's needed. What is it? 3% of the world population has all the money in the world. If we just readjusted and recycled that money, we could all be living good. And I'm not saying that the rich people should have to give the poor people money at all. I'm saying that we shouldn't have to pay the government to be the in-between. I advocate for all people, but mostly for the middleman. It's almost like the middle child syndrome where you always get left out because I'm a grant writer. And what I do know is it's either the top of the top or the low of the low that get all the funding and the money. The people in the month in the middle um, get screwed a lot of the times and they don't get any help or assistance and the way that the system works I've watched it my entire life I know you're fucking trapped you're fucking trapped because if you make y'all know what I'm talking about 
you're on Medicaid and food stamps, if you make $100 more this week, they're gonna cut you off at everything. So you better take a day off work because if not, you're gonna lose all your Medicaid, all your food stamps, and you're better off staying home. There should be kind of some kind of eco incentive approach to this idiotic system that was originated, I believe, in 1942. I'm super interested in my research and getting this off the ground. With that said, I feel like uh, the universe is telling me to end this video. Um, I believe that I got most of what I was trying to say out. This is my very first YouTube video. And remember, I'm going to say every video because I do believe in manifesting. Everybody watch because one day, one day, this bitch is going to be rich and I'm going to give it all away. I swear to God, I can't wait. I know a lot of you are thinking, you're on a fucking boat. Yeah, this foster care bitch. <laughs> I got a boat and I live on a lake. But I'm in over my head on my bills right now because I'm trying to start a business that hasn't quite got off the ground yet and you truly need money to make money. And I'm really bad about asking for help. So maybe this is my call out to contact me at Rock 2 Rescue. That's R O C K number two rescue at rockrescue.com. If you're interested in getting involved, I want to create a community and I have really super big ideas that I feel and know that they will come off the ground if I have the backup and the people and the support. I plan on trying to implement a crowdfunding campaign because I feel super duper strong about mental health being a necessity for all K through 12 students. It should be the foundation. I ask any other educator in the world how mental health should not be the foundation and how, if it was, it couldn't be useful. I'll stop there now because I have so much more to say about that and I thought when I started this video I'd have nothing to say. I will say, maybe I'll have people do a video about how they're doing right now because when I started this video, I was bawling my eyes out and I feel almost uplifted by getting it out. We'll see where all this goes. Thanks for listening.